Hi, I'm Josh, and this is Cars and Joshy. Welcome to Cars and Joshy. I'm going to be working on my master cylinder and brake booster, getting that installed and, and getting the master cylinder bled. And so I'll show you how I'm doing that. All right, so I picked up this uh, master cylinder and brake booster assembly from Rock Auto. And uh, it came with this little tag in there talking about important uh, bleeding procedures. Um, I thought it was just gonna be like any master cylinder. And so I picked up this style bleeder kit where you just plug these bleeder uh, ports into the master cylinder and route this hose back into the reservoir and just uh, bleed it through until there's no, uh, you know, use the plunger and push on the plunger until there's no bubbles coming through. Well, I found out that this isn't going to work on this style of uh, master cylinder. And so I went ahead and ordered this style of bleeder, which is basically just a syringe. And actually, this syringe is a lot harder to find than the little tube style bleeder kit. And so I'll, I'll get the booster uh, mounted to the firewall and then I'll unbolt the master cylinder from there show you guys how to bleed that so before I do that though there's one other thing that I need to do before I start putting fluid through the lines and I'll show you what that is I noticed this brake line while I was doing the parking brakes or the e-brake system and I saw this over here and that really really bothers me looks like a kink right here and i don't know how that happened I, I don't remember that happening when i put this line on originally so i'm actually going to take this line off and rebuild it so i'm going to do that first before i put the master cylinder in there with any brake fluid this brake line that i'm using is super pliable very easy to bend let me show you what i'm mean by easy so try and get this back up in here where i had it i'll move this on just a little bit you can see how i'm working my way towards the brake line over there from here so assuming this is what it's sort of going to look like i'll show you how I'm gonna mark it here, somewhere about there. Now, I can take this line over to my bender. Oh, uh, here we are. Uh, see, I'll just bend it by hand, just like that. Super easy. I'm gonna throw it back up in here. And uh, let's see. Got about like that. I'm gonna bend it back out this way a little bit. And then bend it up to reach this. Mark it right there and bend it straight up. If this doesn't work, I've got a lot more tubing over there that I can use. But I'm going to bend it straight up right here. Hopefully y'all can see where I'm pointing. And then this should just, I should be able to get it to connect like that. So maybe I should try and bend it while I'm looking at this angle here. Yeah. 
hátra. Ugye. Hát, turn it just a little bit. That'll probably be pretty good. Oh yeah, put me a fitting on there, flare it out. I think that would be, that's gonna be all right. All right, I got my brake line chamfered. I, I just use this flat file to kind of chamfer the ends of it. And then I got the, the inside reamed out, use this reaming tool for that and, and this little round file for that so now I'm ready to use the main tool which I didn't expect to have to use this tool again so soon but this is the Eastwood uh, brake flaring or tube flaring tool and this thing is awesome I love this tool um, I'll show you how it works you have various dies uh, for different brake brake line size this is the 3 16ths here and so the way it works is you slide slide the bottom part of the tool in here and if you look there's a one side has a little bevel cut on it and the other side is just flat what you do is you slide the bevel cut towards this end right here and uh let me go get the the brake tube and i'll show you yeah i think i'm gonna have to straighten it out just a little bit let me put the camera down here so you guys can see all right that'll work just fine just like that and then i can re bend it here in a minute so the way this works let me see if you guys can see oh yeah you can see so you slide this on here put the top piece on Slide this over. There's a little lock pin that goes in. Tighten it down to hold it. Once it's a little bit snug, what you do is, if you look at this die right here, there's one that's flat. And what that's used for is a stop gauge, basically. It'll push the brake tube down to where it sits flush with this die then you can go ahead and finish tightening it up so it doesn't move the instructions say to use some uh anises at the end here of the brake but instead of anises i'm gonna put some cutting oil in there just because anises makes a mess i don't like making a mess what i'm gonna do is this is like a two-step thing just like a normal uh double flare so Operation one, three sixteenths. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this cutting oil on there. This should be good. All right, I got it snug in there. So operation one, just gonna pull it, the handle. There it goes. So what that does is make a bubble flare. And uh, when you go over to operation two, it's gonna be 3 sixteenths, quarter inch and 4.75 millimeter. That's operation two. All right. Go ahead and same deal until it stops. Pretty much stop right there. Now what you can do, go ahead and take this off and look at the results. Perfect double flare. Every single time I use this tool, gives a perfect double flare. Love it. So now I can just go ahead and bend this back out exactly where it was before 
I'm go ahead and do this side. And there you have it. Let me take it back up under the truck and see how it how it lines up. All right, let's get this put up there. Got that side started. Now let's get this one going. Easy peasy. Now I want to show you guys how these uh, these clamps work. These are from Quick Performance. I picked these up after I got my rear end from Quick Performance. And I noticed that there were no tabs or anything for the brake lines. And uh, that's when I realized I probably should have got the unfinished rear end so I can weld my own tabs and stuff on there. Um, but hindsight is 2020. I would have got unfinished rear end and I would have got the jack pad on the bottom of the, of the rear end if I would have, if I would have thought about it, but, uh, I didn't do that. So what I got now is just a little piece of rubber here that goes around the axle and these clamps and the way these clamps work is they you can slide the brake line up in here right at the top there and then as you close the clamp around the brake line they've got teeth right here that kind of bite down and interlock with each other so I can tighten it up here and then you can tighten there's a there's a little thing that you can click I think you just heard it snap in there and it just kind of locks in place there we go so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna go get some big pliers and see if I can Squeeze these down any tighter than what they are. Well, one more click is good. I'm all right with that. There we go. I'm gonna call that good. All right, so that's what the clamp looks like. It's got a slot on the top that'll hold the brake line. And then it's just got those, some teeth on the, clamp itself that is what holds it in place I'll show you just like that and so you just squeeze down right here and right here and it tightens those those teeth together like that well I thought the clamps were a good idea um saved me from having to grind off the powder coating and trying to weld some little retainer clips for the brake lines on there and then have to take the rear end back down and try to get it repowder coated and that would have just been a huge hassle so really thankful that quick performance had these these style of clamps for those brake lines so i think this brake line turned out way better than the one before it definitely doesn't have that kink in there anymore so that's what i was worried about so now that I have this on there, I'm going to go ahead and bleed that master cylinder and get that bolted up. Okay, now that I got that brake line fixed, I'm going to go ahead and put on the brake booster and the master cylinder. You can see that I've got the two lines hooked up to the proportioning valve. I've got them ran up here. I'm going to get, kind of swing them out of the way so that I can get the brake booster put on here. And I'll get it bolted up to the pedal. And then I'll unbolt the master cylinder from the booster and go bleed that on the bench. I got the brake booster bolted in and I took the master cylinder off. Let me show you what it looks like under here. So originally the brake booster was connected to the, the brake pedal by a clevis pin, but all I have is a cotter pin, so I figured it would work just as good. So I'll put it in there using that for now. And it's got four bolts. Those bolts are uh, 
basically they're pressed in studs behind the uh, the brake booster just like this and so they come through the firewall and then you put the brake bracket on there the brake pedal bracket and then secure it with the nuts so and then like you saw up here the brake pedal has a has a little pin welded to it with a hole in it and then you just slide the brake booster rod over that pin and secure it with the clevis pin or a clevis hook whatever you got all right so on to bleeding the master cylinder okay so as you can see i've got my master cylinder chopped in the vise right here and this is how we're going to have it for our bench bleeding um, i'm going to go ahead and pour the brake fluid in here and i'm going to use that syringe to push the suck some fluid out and then push some through the ports on this side over here so my little vise wasn't securing the master cylinder that well so i went ahead and moved over to the big vise so i'll just go ahead and start bleeding it here so if we look in here you'll see that one of those ports is clear and one has a little valve in it and that little valve in this port is the primary port and so that's the one we have to bleed first and so we fill this up take the syringe take some of the fluid out and then what we're going to do is remove the primary cap first and we're going to blow some brake fluid through here until no bubbles come out just clear brake fluid and then we'll take some more brake fluid into the syringe and then we'll blow it through the other way or we'll push it through the other way until there's no bubbles coming up through here and then we'll repeat that for this side and then that'll be done reinstall the caps and it'll be done some fluid okay that looks like it's pretty good from that way all right i think that one's good i think that one's good i don't see any bubbles coming out from that way let's go back this way with it it looks pretty good too all right, let's go bolt it back onto the brake booster. I gotta look up the torque specs on these nuts here. I don't wanna over torque them down. So these uh, master cylinder nuts are only 24 foot pounds. Okay. These lines up underneath there at the proportioning valve are still loose so that I can maneuver them around. I want to get these at least started in here before I before I go down there and tighten it to where I can't really have any play. So I guess I'll do that. But that just means this is probably going to drip. Alright, I had a couple of loose fittings down here coming into the caliper on the front wheels. Uh, got those tightened, but I got a puddle of brake fluid up under the under the vehicle now, so now I have to refill the master cylinder, which oh man. It's pretty much empty. So I think I have to take everything back off and re-bleed the master cylinder so i'm gonna unbolt it 
I'm going to do these lines, put the plugs back in, and re-bleed this, and make sure it's done right. I've got all the lines down below tightened up, so it shouldn't leak everything out this time. All right, I wanted to come up here and just kind of look at everything before I re-bleed the master cylinder. And it looks like I have a leak right here on this line. And this line is the one that comes up and over the cross member to tie into the other front brake. And that's not good. I can't have a leak there. So before I re-bleed the master cylinder and and uh, re-hook up all the lines, I want to make sure I stop this leak right here first. So I need to loosen this up and see what I can do. Okay, so what I did was I just used a small pry bar to straighten up this brake line a little bit to get it more in line with the fitting. And then I put a little extra turn on the fitting there. And it's been about five minutes and I don't see anything dripping now. So I'm good there. Okay, I actually did get the master cylinder pulled back off and rebled it and i actually don't think i ran completely out of fluid because when i got it over to the vise i saw there was a little bit in here and when i went to bleed it there were no bubbles at all so i think i'm, I'm good there i went i just came back and put it back on put the lines back on torqued all this back down and i think it's good to go i cleaned up the puddles that i had up underneath i don't see any drips right now uh, I went and checked the back lines to make sure that they're all tight back there. And so now what I'm going to go do is uh, I went ahead and got, this is the bleeder kit that I got. So pneumatic bleeder kit. Uh, so what I've seen people doing on online is they suck out the fluid from the master cylinder, but they do that because it's old and nasty and, uh, I don't need to do that, all my stuff is new. So what I'm gonna do is basically use this piece right here, fill it up with brand new fluid, put it inside the master cylinder, take the other half, this side, and go hook it up at the, the bleeder screws on the, uh, on the calipers. And uh, go ahead and put air to it, open it up and let, let it suck the fluid through the lines. This setup, it actually does go in here and it, it does not overflow the reservoir so that's cool so yeah it just clamps onto the side right here and then you can go back to back and do whatever you need to do or whatever brake caliper you need to go to and the other thing that i got at harbor freight just because i mentioned it earlier and i'm kind of a stickler for the way oem stuff is is uh some clevis pins and uh I'm going to go ahead and swap out the cotter pin that I put in here. I'm just going to slide that out. And then put one of these little clevis pins in here. Let's see what size goes through there. Probably this one here. That'll work. Let me get you guys a. There we go. I think that'll be good. Okay. So my bleeder screw is uh, number 10. So I got the wrench on the line back here. And I'm going to leave it there while I'm bleeding this line. And so it comes with this little fitting. This just pops on over the bleeder screw. I put some electrical tape around this right here because you know this just spins around it looked like a good spot for some air to come in so i put some electrical tape over there trying to trying to block off the air trying to block off the air from that but uh i'm just gonna pop this cap on in here i don't know if you can see it but i'll get another angle of it to show you 
right there you can see just pops over the end of the bleeder screw and then to get the fluid coming through the line you just crack open the bleeder screw and then turn this valve right here to let the air start pulling through so i don't really want to turn that on because i really i'm not sure how fast it's going to pull that fluid through that line and how fast it's going to lower the fluid in the reservoir so i'm going to go ahead and get some help before i turn that on the line is open i'm going to go ahead and turn the air on and see what happens There's nothing in the line right now, so it might take it a while and give it a little bit more pressure. Alright, so here's an update. I got the lines bled all the way to the back back here. Um, you know, I'll, I was able to bleed them from the right rear, left rear, right front, left front. Got everything where it's nice and, uh, you know, steady stream of brake fluid coming out. But uh, this thing right here, it didn't work at all. Uh, what I had found out was the proportioning valve was kind of blocked off from being able to bleed the rear so i actually had to start bleeding the front first and then that kind of released a little like check valve in the proportioning valve to where fluid would finally start flowing to the back back here and even when i had fluid in the back i hooked up this uh little tool here and it still it wouldn't suck anything at all through the line so it's hundred dollars for nothing um i might take that back and just let them know it doesn't work um but we got all of that bled i don't see really any puddles i tried to tighten them everything that i saw um i don't see any puddles right now i guess in the morning it would really it's really going to tell me what's going on as far as the lines go and the proportioning valve under there to see if everything's you know tight like it needs to be but um with all of that said the only problem now which is a kind of a big problem and a huge bummer is that the master cylinder is leaking from here dripping down there's a pretty good leak whenever we start pumping the pedal which means there's like an internal seal or something that's not sealing because it's it's leaking out the back and dripping down here and that really sucks because we did all that work and now i pretty much got to disconnect the lines pull the master cylinder off try and uh either rebuild it send it back to rock auto or something and then you know bench bleed the new master cylinder and hook it all up and then re-bleed the lines so yeah that's a huge bummer um having to wait now to get another master cylinder or master cylinder rebuild kit i don't know which way i'm gonna go yet i've had that for a while so i don't know if rock auto is gonna take it back and uh you know let me exchange it or send me another one or or whatever i'll try to get a hold of them see what they say but it's been kind of a disappointing day, I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping to have this done and uh, then get started on something else. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell for new videos. And thanks for watching Cars and Joshy. Josh out.